What up, people? Welcome to Air Imagination. I'm Ray Sierra, president and founder of Air Imagination Airbrushing. We are the elite urban airbrushes in the USA. You've seen our work in 50 Cent's House Party, Jay-Z's Che Guevara shirt for MTV Unplugged, Nas One Mic, and various other artists. This is our first introductory video to airbrushing. I don't care if you have no prior art skills whatsoever. I'm going to show you how to make some of the most banging shirts in the industry. Now come on and follow me. All right, we're gonna start off with some drilling techniques. Basically, the drilling techniques is gonna show you how to control the airbrush. What I have here now is called Masonite board. You can pick this up at any Home Depot, building supply store, lumber yard. Um, try to get like one eighth as far as with the width. And, um, we use these to stretch the t-shirts on. It's typically what you do is just take your t-shirt, just like I said, stretch it right over. Tuck the sleeves in the back. We'll make sure you get a nice snug fit. You don't want it to be too snug to the point where you're really stretching the t-shirt out because then what you're gonna do is warp the image that you do on the t-shirt. All right, basically we're using a WADA HP BCS airbrush. Um, I have a bottle bottom feed on it right now with some straight opaque Createx black. First and foremost, um, how you hold the airbrush is very important. I like to have it resting, the head resting on this knuckle here. That's going to prevent you from actually crashing the head of the airbrush into the shirt board. Then with my thumb, index finger, thumb on this side, and this finger here, I just start going. Pressing straight down the trigger will give you nothing but air. Now as you pull back, as long as you don't press down, nothing will come out. But as you pull back and press down, that's what releases the paint and the volume of paint. So, for example, nothing but air. As I pull back, I got paint. The more I pull back, you see the, the thicker the line is getting. That means I'm releasing full amount of paint when you go all the way back. So it goes from the thin to thick. We're going to start with the drilling technique, similar to this. What we're going to do is just start with straight lines. This is going to actually give you control. You have to learn how to control the various width of lines, the directions. You want to try to get them as straight as possible. Basically, all you're going to do is just do, try to do as many consistent lines as possible. As you see here, I have some that's thicker. Then I have one here that's thinner. The, the least amount of paint you pull out with the least amount of air will give you the, the thinnest lines. The more paint you pull out versus air will give you a larger line, such as this. You want to do lines left to right, from up from down, down from up. Even lines coming diagonal. Almost any direction you can think of. You want to be able to, to do a line and control a line. Just spraying out the paint build up on the tip of the needle. Now, once you do this, next technique you wanna you wanna do with this is actually you see how you have the little squares and the little <clears throat> X's or the crosses, you wanna just put dots in those. This will actually teach you pinpoint pre um, precision where you actually paint where actually the paint is going to land on your shirt 
because as you notice your, your airbrush is quite some distance away from the shirt sometimes so you want to make sure that where you're pointing the brush at is actually where the paint is going to land at you're going to just hit a whole bunch of corners so now I want you to do is just connect little lines little X's from the, the dots you made at the cross marks of this grid. I want you to do thin, thick lines, play with it. You see what I'm doing there? Taking from one dot to the next, one dot to the next, one dot to the next. You, you can do it in the grid this way. You can also do it in the grid going diagonal. Sort of what we have up here. But make sure, the point is for you to control the lines and do as many straight lines as possible. All right, let's go on to the next drilling technique. All right, I turn the shirt around so we can start the next technique, which is called dagger strokes. It is the most important stroke in airbrushing. Um, like I said, it's called dagger stroke, also known as the rat tail stroke. Basically, you want a thin to thick line with no beginning and no ending, meaning which you will not, you shouldn't be able to tell where the person, the artist, started the line at and where he finished off at. Now, if you notice, my motion is sort of like an airplane going in the land, but taking right back off. And you want to do these just like the lines. You want to do like them from down to up, from up to down, um, diagonally. And you want it to be, like I said, from a point where it's like thick and it trails out to nothing, to thin. Goes thick, thin to nothing. Thick, thin to nothing. To give you an example of, 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 of a dagger stroke that really isn't proper it will be something like this. You can see the person started there because of the paint buildup. Then it went, it's still thick, it's going thin, thin, but then it goes thin and you can see where they ended off at. You want a smooth transition. I mean, these, these strokes are usually used in like when you're doing, um, you see them a lot in people's eyelashes, for example. Like you notice there, you see that's what you typically would see the stroke in the eyelashes. Um, when you're doing grass, um, you'd be surprised. They show up almost in, 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 in every painting that you do to some degree. But you want them to be like I said, from thick to thin, you want to be able to do them from left to right. Right to left. And basically what you're doing is, you're starting with the trigger and the paint pulled back. And you start at, the, let's, say, let's say for example, you start at the thick part. So the trigger and the paint is pulled back and as you're going to trail it off to make it thinner you're just moving it up slowly gradually moving up the trigger until it until you get to the, um, the ending point where it's nothing but air typically that's that's your dagger stroke in a nutshell it just takes all these drills it takes ton of practice in order for you to control the airbrush but once you master the dagger stroke you're on the money. So let's go into the next technique, which I'm basically going to show you is um, figure eights and shading. All right, let's get started now with the figure eights. Now the point of the figure eights is to make sure that you have a constant flow of paint and consistency. You want to basically see that the paint is continually flowing with no skips, no breakage, anywhere like that. Just like I intentionally did that to show you. If you had a, if you had a, if you had actually an airbrush that was giving you some form of skippage, you'll have a break 
from this line to that line. And I'll let you know that you might have a little paint clogged up somewhere along in the head or maybe in the, um, the bottle itself. All you would really do is just pull way back on the trigger and just blast out any paint particles that build up. All right, so now you wanna just do the figure eights, thick to thin, almost like similar to when you're doing the dagger strokes. You wanna keep yourself in that type of um, frame of mind from doing thick to thin lines all the time. This is on excellent actually for when you're doing scripted um, letters and any other form of penmanship with the airbrush. Now, what I like to do also is do circles. With the circles, you draw a circle and then you start shading it. Now how you shade is, first you'll, let's say, do yourself one circle. Then all you're doing is actually from a distance, pulling back on the trigger with a little bit of air and just shooting the paint out there. This actually is part of that knowing before when I had you doing the grids with the dots, knowing exactly where your paint is going to fall at. So here, for example, on this on this sphere, we're gonna we're gonna do it dark on the bottom and light on the top. So it's like the light is coming from the upper left. Now you do a couple of these. It's actually going to teach you how to shade all forms of objects when you're painting. You can also do sort of like a cylinder. That paint build up again. And just shade from both sides toward the inside. That's what takes an object from being one dimensional to a three dimensional. All right, we're gonna go to the next technique, which is called um, gradients. Basically, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do um, see a one line up, another line up, a base. And what you wanna do is make it dark. You wanna do a continuing, almost like a fade from dark to light. And you just blast out that extra paint. Here I'm actually using dagger strokes from a distance. It's like I'm sh using the shading technique mixed in with the dagger strokes. So at the base, I'm applying more paint. And as I go up, it's, you know, less paint. So you want it from the bottom, you see it's very dark. Here's sort of a mid-tone gray here, fading out to nothing. And that's basically what a gradient is. You do this a lot for, um, I use it a lot when I do graffiti letters. Um, sometimes I do a background field and I want just a, a gradient fade from like the, the darkest point of that color to the lightest point. Um, basically, these are all your techniques. You should practice these every time before you start airbrushing the project. Um, when you're beginning, I would practice these at least like two hours a day so that you can get control of the airbrush. All right, let's move on into actually doing some airbrush shirts right now. All right, for this shirt, um, I decided to go with a little parody of one of the shirts I did, actually a um, popular shirt we did for Nas in the One Mic video. 
we had the microphone with the outline of Africa around it on a gray t-shirt. Um, it's one of our very most popular shirts. So what I did this time is actually, I went for the microphone look, but instead of doing Africa around it, we actually did um, the outline of the Bronx. That's where I'm from. And give you a little insight on this too for you guys out there who may already have Airbus shops. This is a design that you can actually use any shape of state, town, and put around the mic. It's actually a big seller, works excellent, and it's pretty simple. All right, I'm using um, straight opaque white Createx paint. And what I'm gonna do first is, I'm gonna just miss, which is similar to shading from a distance. I'm just applying paint, giving the outline of the state like a glow. And what I'm also going to do is, I want to add some um, white to the mic. Give it a little, because it's on a gray shirt. Gray shirt is, you know, of course, darker than a white shirt. So sometimes you have to add a little, like a white base to dark shirts in order to make your colors later on pop out. Another thing too, when you're airbrushing, you should always have air flowing, even if you're not painting. Even if you got no paint coming out, keep the air flowing. That keeps that helps prevent the needle from clogging up. Now, all you're doing is just laying down really a, a good enough mist of white to give the state a glow. That's pretty much it for that. What we're gonna do now is come in with um, straight to the black and start um, defining this um, microphone and the state line. Actually, I'm sorry, the Bronx County line. All right, um, got the opaque black in here now. And what I'm basically gonna start doing is start filling in the, um, the Bronx County lines. So this design is real, it's real hot, real simple. You're only using two colors, black and white. Good practice too for people who are um, just starting out with your drills. Because basically all these lines for the Bronx County are just, <laughs> what I just said, lines. So, you know, if, you, if you're practicing your straight line technique, this will actually help you keep your lines tight and consistent. This is all you're basically going to do. You, still, you see, you still have sort of like the white glow around the black lines. And now what we're going to do, I'm going to jump from the state line, I'm, I'm sorry, the county line. And we're going to actually go right into the microphone right now because you're just going to do the same thing all around with the state line. Just fill in the black. All right, with the microphone here, we just going inside the, the grooves of these mics, putting the black in. Certain parts here will have like, um, they're all rectangular type shapes here. We'll actually have like a little um, bit of what will be like the light to the dark. Well, highlight is actually hitting the inside of the groove. And we just constantly look back at your reference. It's like the number one thing too in airbrushing is you want to make sure that you're staying true to your initial reference. As I'm going in, I'm filling in all the grooves.
I saw an outline in it too. Hit this little nut up in the bottom, little shading with uh, the outline on top of that, throw a little shading on top of it after I outline something. Gives it a more little three-dimensional effect to it. That little nut there, going to the technique we did with the shading, throwing a little dark, blending it out. So the light sources to the left. And basically what you want to do is um, continue going on filling in, in all the grooves. I mean, you can start seeing it slowly but surely starting to form. Just filling in all the black and all the grooves and outline the mic. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that and we'll jump ahead to the next step. All right, I went in, finished up with the black. Used the black with um, the Bronx County outline. Also use it outlining the microphone, filling in the grooves of the mic. And right now I'm going to use it for one last thing. And that's basically going to be just giving a little um, shading onto the mic in certain areas. Referring to the reference there, I noticed that from the bottom, I got sort of that gradient thing going on there. That's a perfect example of uh, the techniques, um, the drilling techniques we were using earlier. Is, um, we had the dark to light gradient flow going on. It was an original one that I did for Nas, so we're going to use it again here. Now I'm basically just shading. So like what we were doing with um, the spheres and the circles. Just coming in. A little, it feels, it's so subtle that you can almost barely see it, but it, it definitely adds to it. Actually, what I'm gonna do on these little, gro little grooves of the mic here. I'm gonna actually put a little shading. Got a paint build up again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and blast that out on the bottom of here. Gives it a little bevel look. Like you notice right there, you'll have, it makes it look like this whole piece is actually three dimensional and it's, it's beveling out. The top part of the mic right here. Go ahead and just, it's like the shadows you're doing is like you're just accentuating the mic in certain parts. You know, metal have that look where you have like the shadows and the lights almost right on top of each other in some instances. So I'm just finishing that up right there. That's mainly, see now it gives it a sort of like a lifted, popping out feel in certain, certain areas. You'll just see like the mic is just coming forward. Um, what I'm gonna do now is pretty much done with the, with the black all together. We're gonna switch off to um, a white now. And with the white, I'm gonna come back and just basically highlight some key areas on this. 
and the shirt is done. All right, so follow me with the white. All right, got the opaque white now. And what I'm gonna do now is just add on some highlights to the microphone and bring a little bit more of the county line out too with the white. I'm gonna start by just doing sort of like a dot. It's almost like the drill, when we drill and we did the dot there, and I'm right in the middle of the groove. And then I'm gonna actually like do light distant dagger strokes away from the dot in the middle. See, and you're gonna get that type of effect. You get the highlight hitting almost as if there's a gate, like a little grid behind the, the metal in the groove. All right, so before, this is an excellent shirt to practice your drilling techniques on. Because almost every, every one of those strokes, shading, line work that we did on the drilling is, is actually in this design. On top of that, like I said, I did this design for um, the rapper Nas for the one mic video. Just a hot concept. Sure, like in every place in uh, the U.S. and around the world. You got somebody out there who wants to be a rapper. They'll love this shirt. Got the microphone. Put their own county, town, state around uh, for the outline. And it just personalizes it for them. What I like to do sometimes too with the shirt for a little extra money. I actually throw on a, I actually do a little tag up verse on the back of the shirt of using one of them, the customer's own rap verses. You go online, you see the Nas shirt we sell, a design like this, cost me for like 50, between 50 to 55 dollars. All right, so the microphone, as far as the highlights, is done. What I'm gonna do now is just Go right around the edges of the Bronx County line. And do a little outline of it, a real soft outline actually. Now I'm going by soft outline, basically I'm using the shading technique again. Just at a distance, applying paint. So I'm misting on the white. I'm gonna do it on the inside of the line as well as the outside of the Bronx County lines. Might get a little white that goes over the black here. Doesn't really affect it. It's all part of the idea because you want it's like this big glow that you're getting. There you have it, the one Mike Bronx shirt. Real simple, uses all your techniques, done deal. All right, um, the next shirt we're gonna do is actually a um, very popular shirt for us. It's called um, Boyqua to the Heart. Basically what it is, it's, uh, it's actually a uh, heart with the Puerto Rican flag incorporated into it. Also, we had um, we actually took some real elements of hearts of having like the, um, the vessels coming out through the sides and the top, dripping blood. This is a very popular shirt for us. Um, almost anywhere where you have a Latin community, you can also customize the shirt so that it can be for um, the Mexican flag, Dominican flag. Almost every state I've been in, there's some form of Latin parade going on. So um, for parade or Latin street festivals. These are actually excellent for you guys to do and have a little table set out there with these shirts. All right, um, we're gonna start it off now using, um, going with the blue first. This is Createx 
opaque blue. And I'm going to start off right now with the triangle part of um, the flag. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to I'm going to use this color. I'm going to lightly shade the area first with the blue. Cuz I'm kind of going to use this one color to be um to work as two colors for me. I mean, I'm going to use it sort of from a distance and make it look what you see there, sort of a light baby blue. And now I'm going to come back with it heavier for like shadowing purposes. As you can see there, I'm using the light blue, almost as the primary color, but coming back with the with the dark blue, which is all the same blue actually. It's just coming in heavier at certain parts with it, staying back at a distance in other areas to give it sort of a shadow and highlighted look. That goes right back to your gradient and your shading techniques from your drilling. So as you can see now, how all these drilling techniques that you probably going to be practicing for hours is going to start to pay off. I definitely want the blue to be strong around the star. Misting again. The same thing as shading. I'll take a step back and I quickly just look at the reference in this. I'm going a little bit off of the reference there, only because I did this design hundreds of times. I'm just taking from a little different angle. That's just uh. The artist in me, I guess you can say. All right, the blue is laid down more or less where I want it. I'm um, gonna now come in with the red. This is another one of those designs that um, we're gonna be doing throughout this tape, um, where you're gonna have a lot of the drilling techniques are applied to it, and it's also simple enough for after you practicing your drilling technique for about a month or so, you should be able to knock these things out with no problem. All right, so let's move on to the next color, which will be the red. All right, um, got the Createx Opaque Red right now. We're going to basically go in and start doing the red of the, um, the heart and the flag also, which you can see is that's like the most strongest color in the, um, the photo. I'm going to start out sort of like I did with the blue. I'm going to just lightly mist on top. I kind of do this, I mean, if you can almost see it, I kind of do this because it, it almost gives me an idea of where I want my highlights to be at or what's starting to look good without actually having like to layer on a lot of color and then later on trying to correct it or go back and trying to retrieve those highlights. Got this little vessel over here. Now I'm going to get inside and start defining. I'm going to see how that consistent flow goes. That comes from the uh, figure eight drills. Like I'm just flowing with the airbrush to make those drips. Now I'm going to go in, here comes the shading technique. So I add in the dark to the light. Thank you. 
she knows how I airbrush. I mean, it's real important. Um, they mentioned this before, but as far as body movement, you see a lot of times you see my whole body move with the airbrush. I mean, you want to like almost have this airbrush as an extension of your body. Think of it as that form. So when you're doing like a straight line, you just wouldn't go straight across like that with one arm. You're actually going turn your body. That'll keep you having more likely of having an even straight line. Same thing when you're doing like something circular. It's better like to just move your shoulders, everything. Because that's going to give you the whole motion and allows you actually to create these shapes and images um, a little bit more freely. Now, what I'm doing is now just defining the shadow on the drips, adding the red. I'm going to do uh, this special right here. You're going to see it's going to be, I'm actually going to do with the nice little gradient from the bottom part of it being a little darker. Fading it out, little dagger strokes too. Help me to fade it up and out. Also got like little, what looks to be little veins coming off. These are just doing straight lines just jaggedly. I mean, there's no, there's no real reference or any exact correct way you're supposed to do these. You just... You know, have fun with them. Now you can start to see how it's starting to take form and shape up there. What I'm going to do is bring, start bringing in the red a little heavier. And what I'm doing right now from a distance, I'm actually doing dagger strokes. I'm trying to keep, I kind of like that highlight I got going on right there that sort of hot spot going on right there so i'm trying to keep that but at the same time add enough red to it that it doesn't have such a pinkish look and it's still red and that's just by laying in the, the red on the top darker and here we go with the gradient you see the dark dropping down to like a mid-tone and then going into the lighter part of the red so basically what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take the red fill in the same way here all of the, the rest of the design and then we'll jump into the next color which will probably be the burgundy to give the red a little bit of under um, shadows and make it pop up make the the blood part of this actually lift up okay i went in and um finished off all the red basically doing the same thing to the rest of the design that i did with the right hand side that we uh showed you in the beginning Added in some drips, various places, you know, you can be spontaneous, erratic, doesn't matter. Um, you see I left some of the shirt over here also, the underneath pinkish and uh, the white of the shirt as sort of a natural highlight in the, um, in the design. Um, what I got right now is actually the burgundy createx inside the pink cup and we're going to start doing under shadows of the blood effect on the heart. For example, you see, uh, you see it automatically starting to lift the design up. Since this part of the blood is like flowing, overlapping the bottom part of the heart, you need to have the shadow right underneath it. This, this technique here I'm using basically is like it's very similar to the very similar to the, the, the shading with the spear in the circle um, just you know from a distance just misting in the shadows I'm actually going to get in anywhere that the blood is at I'm going to go right underneath it and on the drips too. These are the little ones. I'm gonna give it a little. And 
as you can see, it just starts bringing out the drips, starts bringing out the whole design. You're actually giving volume. Don't have to overwork this. I mean, as you can see, everything's starting to pop out. You're just lightly going to go underneath anywhere that you see the blood. Almost think of it if you took like um, like paint and poured on top of something. You're going to have that paint overlapped and whatever is underneath it, and it's going to have a lifted fill because it naturally has a shadow undercast it. Um, what I'm going to do now is continue with the burgundy. How uh, you saw in the drips underneath the the dripping blood over the heart finish up the rest of the heart with it and then we're going to um a little thalo blue to bring out the star a little more and a little shadowing on the triangle blue okay um went in there with the burgundy did all the under shadows underneath the blood hit up some of the drips um for the blood that's falling away from the design and right now i have a uh, thalo blue and they're from um, Createx, which is sort of like a midnightish type of blue. We're going to go in here and I'm going to basically do what I did earlier and just hit some of the sh shadow it a little more. That's all I'm really going to do with it. I want to bring out the star a little bit more, so I figure coming in with a darker blue underneath it. Will help pop the shadow, help, actually help pop the um, star out a little better. Of course, I'm going to come back later with a white. And that would bring the star out all by itself, too. Trying to do like a little lines in it, so like little wavy lines going through it, almost as if it's, it's, it's wrinkling, sort of what you would see in a flag. And that's basically all I'm going to do with the, the thalo blue there on the blue part. What I like to do sometimes too is um, I use the same color, like the blue actually does it would help darken. Like if I see certain areas where the burgundy didn't get the undershadow enough that I want to pop out more, I'll come back with the thalo blue right underneath it. And it gives it almost like, sort of like almost a transparent black type of look. And that just help. As you see now, like the design is going to pop right out. I'll go ahead and you're basically doing the same exact thing I did with the burgundy. What I like to do too with it is, since this is going to be the white of the flag, and really got like a little overspray on it from um, the other colors, which I don't mind really in this particular design because it gives it a, the white is sort of reflective of all the colors around it. So what I do is I usually just go around it with the blue. Give it a little sh shadowing to it with the blue. When I come back with the white, I'll cut back on some of the blue with it. But once again, you use this color right, right underneath where you had the burgundy at. Sort of like accenting the burgundy that was there before and you can see the difference the, the blood is just starting to pop right off of the heart now. Um, I'm going to work the rest of this image with the thalo blue, popping out more of the blood. And then we'll cut in with the white and we'll go into the lettering and that'll be mostly it. All right. All right. Um, I went in with the thalo blue, put it in underneath all of the places in the blood that I wanted to actually bring out more of a like deeper shadow, not overpowering 
the burgundy that I already underlined also. So it's just really complimenting the burgundy. I also put it in, um, as you see here, in some of the vessels, the blood vessels coming out. Shadow that. More or less, the heart is done for the exception of the white highlights. That's going to really pop everything out. Uh, I want to go into now actually doing the lettering, um, which is up here. I'm just going to use Createx Opaque Black for that. Um, I'm going to start putting the lettering in. Lettering is um, one of the most important things on any shirt. I mean, you're, you're going to probably sell more shirts involving names and, and lettering than any other design you have. So definitely practice your penmanship, the figure eights, um, any other exercises that you can even think of of your own. To help you develop like looping styles and cursive lettering. I could have freehand these letters. I drew them on first in pencil. I, I suggest when you're beginning that it's always better to draw your your lettering on lightly in um in a pencil first. Only because Lettering can get tricky. If you try to freehand it, sometimes you might find yourself that you didn't um, properly proportion it on the shirt correctly. And sometimes you'll spell one word too big, another one looks too small, and the next one at the end, you don't have enough space and you're cramming everything in. So it's, it's always better to like, try to pre-lay out any shirt you're doing until you develop the skills where you know it's just become second nature and you don't, you don't need to do that anymore. Another thing with lettering, it's a, it's not one of those things where you got like the the thin to thick. You see, start to see a little bit of the dagger stroke in there, like the eye, for example, is like a thick to thin. Going back to those drilling techniques, they just keep showing up and showing up. Using the black, like I said, I'm doing little dagger strokes in certain parts of the letter, thicken out certain other parts of it to give it a little weight. These aren't your typical letters, too. This is just more so of like a, sort of like a cursive tag up style. I mean, I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, but uh, <laughs> it's one of those street things. You know, one of the elements we bring you through the hood. What I'm doing now is basically doing an undershadow of the lettering. Using the same black from a distance, I'm putting in actually like a, a thin shading is what I'm doing. And it's doing a drop shadow behind the letters. So I make the letters look like they're actually going off the shirt. The way you do this is basically you're, you're doing the letter over again, but more so in the mist tone. What I'm going to do now is go ahead, finish the lettering on the bottom with the black, add in a drop shadow, and then we'll jump into the white, throw the highlights on this, and it's a done deal. All right, now we finished up with the black, um, using it for the lettering. Also, like I said, from a distance, doing a little drop shadows behind the lettering. I'm gonna come in now with straight opaque white um, from Createx, of course, and um, start popping out some of these natural highlights I left there on the heart, and actually the star in other little areas also. The highlights I usually save for last usually like my, my signature closing on the shirt. Coming to the star like that, just add the white into it. Start popping it out more. Also, on so, so these little ruffles I got going on here in the flag, in the blue part of the flag. 
I'm gonna bring that out. And also with the blood, the red of the heart. Doing little, with the blood I'm doing like little drops. That's usually what you see on any type of um, liquid. A little, little drop and then usually you'll have like a little trail, which I'm doing also right there now. And I'm gonna do a little shine. <clears throat> so we all know that uh, most liquid has reflect the light. You want to put a little shine up on that. Starts popping it right out. Also, I'm coming here with, uh, like I told you before, where I actually did the white at and had the blue here. Like I said, I'm going to cut back on some of that blue. Actually brighten that out a little bit more. Do the same thing on this side. So this is all the final stages. I mean, I know some of you are sitting at home probably saying like, wow, he makes it look so easy and effortless. But I want you guys to keep in mind, like I said on a, like, it's, like I said, like it states on the DVD cover. I started when I was 21 years old, no prior art skill whatsoever, and just had a passion for it. You know, I taught myself. I had no um, nobody there to help me along. I actually bought books, which actually had the drilling techniques in there. I didn't even get a chance to see anybody actually do the drilling techniques. I had to read about them and sort of do them on my own. That's when I decided to... I definitely had this idea a long time ago to, to do a how-to DVD. And I think it was great coming from somebody who didn't have any prior art skills himself. All right, now you see the white is just starting to just, I'm just going in areas I think that the light would hit it. I mean, it really depends on your light source. But like I said, I'm not a traditional, natural artist and going to all the technical aspects of where the light is coming from all the time. I just do whatever looks good. I mean, you play with it. You just have fun with it. That's what I want you guys to do with these designs. Take these designs, make them your own. I kind of more or less satisfied with the highlights on the heart. We're going to just hit up a couple of these little drops like that. Of course, the blood vessels. They need love too. And I'm starting hitting up the lettering. I'm going to do this one to take a step back so you can see this. So I'll hit up the letter and it starts popping out. Starts giving a little highlights on the letter, start bringing the letter out even more. Especially in areas down here on the bottom. If you notice on the bottom here, I wrote right over like some of the dripping blood. Now in order for you to really bring bring it out to see that it says the word heart, you gotta actually throw some highlights. So I put some highlights on the areas that's really overlapping. Just playing with lights and darks here. And all I'm doing is little dagger strokes. Coming out with a little shading. You see how it just starts popping right out.
And while I'm down here, I just add on a couple little highlights to the, the blood dripping off of the back of the heart. Little tips too. And we'll go up to the top and finish off the, the lettering right up here. As you see. One thing with highlights, you try to keep them all in the same place on each letter. The lettering is one of those things you want to stay consistent with. I learned that a lot from like graffiti artists. They tell me, you know, if you, you draw one letter a certain way, you draw the, the next one the same style. Keep everything consistent. Just makes sense. All right, um, this is this baby here is done. And on a little, minor a little quick highlights on it. But there you have it. I tell you, this design is very, very popular. You can customize it almost to like. I mean, I know earlier I said to you know it's a Latin design on for this example, but you could almost make this out of any flag. Um, you can always keep the, the blood dripping off the heart and you can throw like the whole flag and this triangle apart. Um, just many ways to approach this. You know, you play with it, you make it your own, and there you have it. Another design I would say that you could sell easily for about 35 to 40 bucks. Using all those basic drilling techniques we just learned. This is a part of the DVD you all been waiting for. For all you people out there who have no prior art skills, this is the secret. This is something nobody even showed me when I was first starting out. I had to find this out through elaborate measures and means. This right here we have is a professional projector. It's also known as an opaque projector. It's by Autograph. This is the MC250. This one runs about $400. They have some that's under 100 bucks out there for you guys who are just starting up with a budget. What this does is very similar to when you was in grade school and your teacher used to do the transparencies, put them in a projector, and shoot them onto a screen to show the whole classroom the image. This is, the concept is very similar. What we're going to do is we're going to take these words here, P-I-M-P, pimp, little graffiti right there. What you do is you place your image into the screen that's on top of the projector. Close it up. Then turn it on facing your shirt, canvas, car, whatever it is you plan on working on. This projector is going to shoot the image directly onto the t-shirt. All you have to do at this point now is pick up a pencil and just trace over the lines. Anybody can do this. That's why you're going to be doing any one of these designs that you see on this DVD. And any other thing you can get a picture of that you could fit into the projector, you'll be able to create on the shirt. As you can see, the projector is set up facing the t-shirt. The image is projected onto the t-shirt. All you have to do now is grab a pencil and trace it. So like I said, whether you have any art skills prior to this or not, it doesn't matter. This is a little cheat sheet. You can use a projector for portraits, abstract art, graffiti, anything you want. You can use it outside, doing murals. It's very versatile. You can even put, this is called an opaque projector because you can even put an object. Sometimes I don't have a picture of something. Let's say if I'm doing a, a club and they want me to do like a particular liquor bottle. Sometimes I just throw a liquor bottle right up on there and just project the whole bottle.
as you can see, it's quick. So can you, you can imagine, let's say somebody came in and they had like 20 shirts they wanted done up. You didn't want to have to sit there and hand sketch out the same design 20 times and you got to make sure it's proportionally correct each time. This saves a lot of time. Every Airbus shop uses one of these. It's one of the secrets that they don't like to tell you. All right, it's done. I'm ready to paint this bad baby. Let's do it. All right, there you have it, PIMP. Traced onto the shirt from the projected image. If this ain't worth your investment, I don't know what it is. Like I said, you'll be able to do this even if you had no art skills. We're gonna go right into painting this. I think I'm gonna start it off with a little Createx opaque yellow. For, um, we're gonna do a little celtic -y colors today, a little yellow and green. Graffiti shirt. Basically what you're gonna do is just fill in. One thing I love about graffiti shirts, they're simple. Um, a lot of people will object to that saying that the letters are intricate. They are. That's gonna be a whole nother DVD. We're gonna have a how to do graffiti lettering DVD coming soon. But basically what you're gonna do is just blast in the yellow. It's a beautiful thing about graffiti, man. You can you can almost do anything you want on graffiti. It truly is a, a form of art that's just an expression of colors and lettering. As you can see, I switched from um, the bottles and went to a little side feed cup. Just basically throw your paint into the side feed cup. When they run out, you can switch. I do that sometimes just um, for stuff like this. It's just quicker for me to just to change colors. Because right after I lay this yellow down, I'm going to go straight into a golden yellow. In which the golden yellow will be like... Uh, Sort of like the beginning, the mid-tones of this graffiti piece. As you see, I'm just like quickly just blasting everything. I mean, you got your outline there, thanks to the projector. Yeah, you see, I just laid all the yellow down. And I'm immediately going to jump into Createx Golden Yellow. You see right there, I'm laying the golden yellow down. I'm actually doing like an inner outline of the letters. Then I'm going to just fade it up. So that gradient, there you go again. Another one of the drills that work. What I'm going to do right here is we we'll basically do the gradient from the dark to the light to the bottom on all the rest of the letters. And then we're going to jump into our next color, which will be, um, I think I'm going to go with a nice, I think I'm going to throw an orange in there. Why not? Matter of fact, not even an orange. Let's go with a, let's go with a, with a brown in there. All right? All right, um, we went in there with the golden yellow. Did a little gradient from dark to light with the golden yellow. Now I got um, Createx light brown. And I just want to... Start so adding a little depth to these letters. You can see there, almost like a little shadowing. Giving a little dimension to it. As you can see there. 
So it's going to just, just, just put a little accents of this color in there. I'm not going to do something, it's not going to be too prominent, too strong in here. It's going to be just subtle enough to complement the image. But like I said, with graffiti, man, you can do almost anything you want. And on that note, I think what I will do is I'll throw a little, little wave to it. Little I'm gonna throw a little wave right through all the letters. Remember what I tell you before about graffiti and lettering in general. Whenever you do the one letter, you gotta do the all of them. So I'll drop a little little wave, a little shadow dropping underneath. Almost give it like if I was trying to do a metallic gold chrome look. All right, I'm gonna go ahead in and put in the rest of this light brown, and then we're gonna jump to the next color, which is gonna actually be, um, we're gonna jump right into the background of this, going with a nice little green on the background. All right. All right, as you can see, we have um, the light, laid down all the light brown inside of it. Gave it a kind of little goldish look, you know, like it's made out of gold. That was just simply just going in there. You're almost like doing piece outlines inside of uh, the lettering. Like, you know, you'll start a little piece here, then you won't do nothing there, then you come and do another little inner outline right there, and just little fade shading technique. What I have now is a light green. I'm gonna throw that in for the background. Basically what I'm gonna do is just outline the letters first. So like when you was a kid and you uh, used to color in your coloring book, your mother used to tell you, don't go outside the lines. Similar concept here. You just wanna just go around the, go around the, um, the initial image without actually going into the lines. Yeah, so you're just outlining this initially. That way you're giving yourself a, like a safe border margin if you're gonna do any other designs. Like I have already something in mind, so I know that I'm gonna carry the green a little further out. So I just wanna make sure that I have a nice little thick outline around the initial golden yellow artwork so I don't cut into it. On the inside, I'm going to start initially just start color filling that immediately, like on the inside of the lettuce. Just go ahead and fill that in. Alright, so what I got in mind, I'm going to start doing some little bubble effects. Classic graffiti, South Bronx, New York City bubble effects around the top of this whole piece here. And all these are like little little circular dots just flowing anywhere you want them to go. I'm gonna carry them around to the bottom of to the base of like the letters right here. And then what I think I'm gonna do for the bottom part, instead of doing bubbles, we're gonna do some drips. Too much flavor coming from this, so we're gonna have to just let it drip down. Like I said, this is classic graffiti right here. 
You can't have the old school graffiti style without the bubbles and the drips. All right, so you can sort of see where I'm going with it. Bubbles on the top, drips on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and finish it up. Then we'll move into the next color, which will be a black. And then our final color will be white to highlight, pop it all out. All right. All right, doing the green, the old school bubbles, the old school drips. Now we're gonna move on to the old pig black and we're gonna start um, outlining the whole design. The black is gonna just bring it all to life, make it pop all out. Got a little build up here, grab my little trusty. Just gonna outline all the letters. One thing you're doing graffiti, you try to do, um, I know it's a lot of guys do thick to thin outlines. Usually gives a more character, has more weight to it. I'm trying to do what I'm doing here is a little mist shadow right, underneath certain areas of it behind the behind the outline because it makes it a little lift up more. Whole 3D feel. And also while I have the black in, in hand, I'm going to go and hit up along some of those same lines where I did with the, the little accent shadowing of, with the light brown. What this is going to do is going to actually accentuate that and at the same time help pop the image out even more so. You see it on certain areas like this, in the corners. It just automatically lift it right up against the green. Right off of the green, it pops right out at you now. Only thing left to do is all other letters with the black. And then I'll come back with the white and actually throw the highlights on this. And it's a done deal. All right. Um, so you see, we took the black, outlined the whole PIMP. Now I'm gonna go on with the white, throwing some highlights on this, and it's a done deal. Basically, gonna just go in certain areas and just add a little white highlights to it, bring it out. Remember, though, the same areas you do it in one letter, and no, I'm sorry, one letter. You should do it in all other letters. It has like a gold effect look to it. I'm just gonna kind of go right where some of the shadows is at and just highlight right on top of that. Right opposite of the shadows. All I'm also gonna do is um highlight some of these bubbles up there. I'll give it a little three-dimensional look. So sort of like it's sort of like what we're doing with the drilling with the doing the circles and the spheres, whereas we had the dark to the light. Now we just we already have like the dark there naturally, so we're just coming in with the highlights and adding the highlights coming in from the right, upper right, and just fading it in. Same shading technique, just a reverse process. All right, so basically I'm just adding in the whites in the same letters, <clears throat> the same areas on every letter, 
I'm gonna fill in the bubbles with, um, with some white highlights. I'm gonna also hit a couple of these drips with the white like that. And we'll jump back and see the um, finished product. All right, what you have here, the official PIMP shirt, graffiti style, old school bubbles, old school drips. Graffiti shirts range anywhere from um, your bubble letters to uh, this type of graffiti style from like 25, I go even all the way up to like $55 if they really want a wild style graffiti shirt. Um, this was, like I said, this image created using a projector. It's a wrap.